So I finally got my hands on the new Sony a7 III, which is their new basic camera, which is probably anything but. But it is a full frame camera that starts at about $2,000, which is kind of crazy. I'm excited about it, so I figured I would do a complete walkthrough. Uh, this is the first time that I've done a complete walkthrough on this channel of a camera, so would love to hear what you guys think when all of this is done in the comments below. But basically, if you're not familiar, a complete walkthrough on my channel is where I go through every single feature I possibly can on a new piece of technology so that you guys are more informed should you want to maybe go out and buy one. So with that said, there's a lot to go through, so let's start with the hardware. As Sony's latest mirrorless camera, it continues the same small form factor. The device measures just under four inches tall, five inches wide, three inches deep, and weighs about a pound and seven ounces. It's made out of a magnesium alloy with a leather looking grip on the handle that's actually made out of rubber. At the top, we have our multi-interface shoe for attaching accessories like flashes, monitors, etc. Next to that, our shooting mode dial, the modes of which we'll get into in a little bit. Then we have two of our custom function buttons that you can set to do various actions from within the camera settings and the custom function wheel that you can set to do a custom variable action from with the settings as well. Our exposure adjustment wheel is next to that to add or remove stops of exposure quickly. And of course, our on-off toggle around our shutter button. On the right side, we have our dual SD card slots, the second of which also doubles as a memory stick duo port, by the way. On the left, we have our 3.5 millimeter stereo microphone mini jack, our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, micro HDMI port capable of 4K still or 4K uncompressed video out, and Bravia Sync, which is their control over HDMI. We have a USB 3.1 Gen 1 port and a Sony multi-port micro USB port. On the front, we have the full frame 35 millimeter sensor under our Sony E-mount metallic lens mount, another custom function wheel that you can use and our autofocus illuminator self timer lamp. On the back, we have our large 2.95 inch TFT touchscreen monitor that can tilt up by 107 degrees and down by 41 degrees. There's no flip out screen, sadly, for those of us who want to use it to film ourselves. You know, like some of us like to do. We also have our third custom button, menu button, our XGA OLED viewfinder, rear mounted video recording button, autofocus toggle that also enables magnification in the LCD screen whenever you're doing playback, our auto exposure lock button, which also shows images in a grid during playback, or even a monthly view as well, which is kind of cool. And then we have our handy joystick for selecting items on the screen, as well as fine tuning the autofocus spot selection after you tap the screen to focus on a spot. Under that, we have the function key for bringing up common adjustments like shooting mode, autofocus mode, exposure compensation, ISO, etc. Then there is the dial wheel that can be used to select things on the screen with the button in the middle and using the ring as a D-pad or spinning it as a dial as well. And we can also get to quick settings while shooting like the display mode by tapping one direction, ISO by tapping the other, and a third direction to get the shooting mode slash timer settings. And near the bottom of the back, we have the playback button and our delete button that can also be set up as a fourth custom key in the camera settings. Now at the bottom of the Sony a7 III, we have the standard threaded mount for a tripod, etc., and our battery door, which accepts the new Z-Style NP-FZ100 battery, and even has a small slot for a cable to come out when using, say, a faux battery accessory. Now, battery life is rated by Sony at 710 shots if you're using the LCD and 610 shots if you're using the viewfinder or 125 minutes of movie recording. Lastly, the body, buttons, and dials are sealed for weather protection, but Sony warns that they are not 100% dust and moisture proof. Now, the sensor inside the Sony a7 III is a 24.2 megapixel full frame 35 millimeter Exmos R CMOS sensor. This translates to 6,000 by 4,000 pixels in 3 by 2 aspect ratio, or 6,000 by 3,376 in 16 by 9. For video, it's capable of capturing 4K in up to 30 frames per second, and 1080p in up to 120 frames per second. Now, since the sensor is technically 6K in size, it actually oversamples this and brings it down to 4K for even sharper 4K, as most of Sony's latest Alpha series do. The a7 III also has image sensor shift stabilization with five access compensation built into the body. Okay, now let's quickly dive into some of the software settings and capabilities of the a7 III as fast as we can. 
The a7 III has the following shooting modes. Intelligent Auto, which all settings are handled by the camera, and it'll even try to identify the scene from a list of 11 scenes that it has, which we'll go to in a second. Program Auto, which is exposure is automatically handled by the camera, so the aperture and shutter speed are not necessarily adjustable, but the other shooting settings are. Aperture Priority, this allows you to change the aperture manually, but the shutter speed is adjusted automatically for you. It's meant to basically let you get a better defocused background or more bokeh. Shutter Priority, this allows you to adjust the shutter speed, but the aperture is handled by the camera. This is good for if you're trying to get a long exposure shot or if you're trying to create trails and an image to maybe show movement. Manual. This is pretty self-explanatory, but none of the camera settings are handled by the camera. You just manually adjust all of them. We have then custom one and custom two, which you can change whatever settings you want within the camera itself and save them as a preset for one of these two options. When you turn the dial, you then end up with one of those. Movie mode, which sets the camera to record videos. It also adds little things like the audio uh, record levels on the screen, which is something that obviously you would want in movie mode. S and Q, which stands for slow motion and quick motion. And you can actually go into the settings and adjust whether you want it to be a slow or a quick motion, depending on the frame rate you're recording at and the frame rate you want it played back at. Now, whatever you use this for, it will automatically adjust that so that it is already in slow motion or quick motion as soon as it's exported. And finally, we have Scene or SCN, which is manual scene selection mode that lets you choose from some of the 11 different modes that it automatically chooses for you in intelligent auto mode. Now in scene selection mode though, you can only choose from portrait, sports action, macro, landscape, sunset, night scene, and night portrait. Kind of going through the camera settings, we have the ability to shoot photos in either JPEG in extra fine, fine, or standard quality, raw in either compressed or uncompressed, or JPEG and RAW at the same time. And the JPEG size can also be 20 megapixels, 8.7 megapixels, or 5.1 megapixels, and can either be in 16 by nine or three by two aspect ratio. The device also has a neat feature that I'm kind of a fan of coming from another camera with a smaller sensor size, which is my A6500. It allows me to not have to immediately go out and buy all new lenses. It's called APS-C Super 35 mode, and it allows you to use lenses meant for those specific sizes on the larger full-frame sensor of the a7 III. With it set on, it'll automatically detect those lenses and adjust the capture to only use that portion of the sensor so that there's no vignetting, which I find pretty neat when I wanna use like my trusty Sigma 18 to 35 art lens that is meant for APS-C sized sensors. There are also a ton of different creative styles and picture effects that we're not gonna just go into right now, but you can select from these, uh, including ones that are like vivid colors, sepia, black and white, neutral, and a ton more. Like most Sony cameras, we have different picture profiles as well. Now, these are examples of various different gamma and color profiles on the camera. You can actually adjust these further and customize them though if you want as well. Now we don't need to go through all of them, but the ones that need to be mentioned on this camera in particular, besides the standard ITU 709 gamma and the Cine ones, are the PP7, which is Sony's S-Log2, which can be used for higher dynamic range, but requires more post-editing. PP8 and PP9, which are their new S-Log3 profiles, which have similar benefits and costs. And finally, we have PP10, which is hybrid log gamma. Now this is the profile that you would use to be able to record in HDR on the camera or high dynamic range. Without going too much into detail here, this just means higher contrast, more colors, more shades of colors as well, but will only work if the device playing the video back is also HDR capable. Now the different drive modes available for shooting are single shooting, which is your normal shooting mode, continuous shooting, which allows you to hold down the shutter button to continuously takes photos until you let it off, Self timer, which allows you to set a timer between when you press the shutter and when the photo is taken, you have 10, five and two second options. Self timer continuous, which will either take three or five images in a row after the timer counts down of 10, five or two seconds. Continuous bracket, which takes multiple photos while holding down the shutter button, each with different exposures. You can choose between three, five or nine images and either a 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, one, two or three stops of exposure that changes in between each image. Single bracket is similar to continuous bracket, but it requires you to press the shutter button in between each photo. White balance bracket, same thing as continuous or single bracket, but this time it's three different photos with different color tones from warmer to cooler and then whatever it automatically set in between. 
Finally, we have DRO bracket, which shoots three images, each with differing degrees of dynamic range optimizer enabled. It's sort of like an auto HDR mode that we like to see in, in popular cell phones, like the Pixel 2, for example, but kind of manually stretched out into different photos so you can see which one you like better. The Sony a7 III also has focus peaking that can be set to different levels and colors to help you identify what is in focus in your image when you have it set to manual focus. It also has exposure zebra setting that allows you to set a certain brightness level and it'll highlight that level with a zebra pattern. You can set it to the brightness you are looking for to see everything correctly exposed in the zebra pattern, or you can set it to a minimum value and it'll show you everything in zebra that's over that value to check for say overexposure. Now you can also register people's faces and the camera will automatically try to adjust the focus to make sure those people are in focus for photos, which is kind of interesting. On the video side, we have XAVCS 4K, XAVCS HD, which is 1080p, and AVC HD formats to choose from, with the S4K being the only way of shooting in 4K resolution. And we can select between 30 or 24 frames per second, either 100 or 60 megabytes data rate for 4K, or we can go from 24 frame per second at 50 megabytes per second, all the way up to 120 frames per second with 100 megabytes per second in 1080p. Now something cool that I found in here was the ability for the camera to also record proxy files automatically for you. So these are lower resolution versions of whatever you are filming that are also saved at the same time. So for example, you can shoot in 4K and these proxy files will come out in 720p and can easily be used for an offsite editor to work with without having to give them the full footage that they might need a faster internet speed for, etc. Uh, and then they can just send you back the project file in Premiere, whatever. Or they can even be sent directly to the phone using the Sony Play Memories app and edited and shared to social in that 720p resolution just like that. The camera also has a cool zoom feature that allows it to control any lens with power zoom capabilities via the dial on the camera for smoother zooming, but it also has a clear zoom function that is a digital zoom that minimizes the deterioration of the image, but only zooms in a small distance. Still, it's not a bad option just to get maybe a little closer to a subject, even if your lens can optically do so. Now for connectivity, you can send images to the phone or computer using the Wi-Fi Direct and Sony Play Memories app that we mentioned, and you can also add a file server info into the camera to send directly via FTP or beam to a TV using Wi-Fi Direct. There's also an option to control the a7 III using a smartphone, and you can even use NFC by tapping the back of your phone to the NFC symbol on the right of the camera to automatically pair with it and start controlling it. You can also organize your photos by creating folders to save to directly on the camera and even create a custom menu for your most used settings. And finally, again, the camera costs $2,000, which I think is crazy because to get a full frame camera, you'd usually have to spend a lot more than that, let alone one that shoots 4K. In addition to that, I took a bunch of photos and video samples, including slow-mo, light, dark, all of these other fun things. You can check out the link to get to my article on my site where I've embedded all of those and you can check those out. You can even download them and mess with them in case you're uh, really interested in all of that. Otherwise, I found the best deal that I could on the camera. Uh, at the link below, so go check that out in the description. Uh, also, I have to give a shout out to WeWork. So I've been using WeWork as a co-working location for two years now, and I love it. This is not an ad, I promise. But they did offer to give you guys up to 20% off for your first year if you use my link below to check out their co-working locations. They have them all over the planet. Um, so you just have to go down, use my link and sign up for a free tour. No obligation, just go check it out if you like it. Regardless though, hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, please thumbs up or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Also don't forget to check out my channel and subscribe if you like what you see there. Don't forget to hit the bell next to the word subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. Regardless though, again, as always, thanks for watching.